Good morning, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for August 1st, 2014, around 9 a.m. in the morning. Going to be a nice and sunny day in Dorica. Highs close to 80. Enjoy it because this weekend might be overcast and raining. Some news to report. Happy International Beer Day. Sad news to report in the world of professional wrestling. Longtime wrestling announcer from Memphis, Tennessee, and promoter Corey Macklin passed away in a car accident at the age of 43. Condolences to his family. The Red Sox didn't play last night because they had off, so they started a three game series with the New York Yankees. And also, Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers won his 10th straight game, beating the Atlanta Braves 2 1. Another complete game by Kershaw. He's going to win that and El Cyan unless if he gets hurt the rest, rest of the season. And also Cliff Lee of the Phillies has a on the table us with a strained elbow. He might need Tommy Don John surgery and his career could be done because he's 36 years old. And one more thing, RDT, RDT, RDT is going to get back market basket sooner and later. He has to. There's no market basket without RDT. And 25,000 people and so many customers depend RDT gets Market Basket back up and running where it belongs. My first video subject of the day is about the late great professional wrestler, the Junkyard Dog. The Junkyard Dog was played by Sylvester Ritter. Sylvester Ritter was a football player in college and he was going to try out for the NFL, but he had two very bum knees. So he couldn't make the NFL. He watched professional wrestling, and he says he couldn't make a career out of it. And he got trained to be a professional wrestler, and he started out in the Memphis Territory. And in 1979, he went up to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, for Stu Hart's Stampede Wrestling Organ wrestling organization as Big Daddy Redder, a heel he filled with Jake the Snake Roberts over Stampede's North American Heavyweight Championship and they had some classic matches. They even had a ladder match which is on a WWE ladder match DVD video. And by 1980 the owner of Mid-South Wrestling and promoter Bill Watts saw like junk um, Sylvester Ritter and he says I'm going to he brought him down to his territory mid-south and he requested him at face the junkyard dog junkyard dog had so much charisma and he had he the, the awe of him even though he was not the best of wrestlers he only had six great moves but those moves he ha used them at the right time and it got over big with the fans junkyard dog's first major feud in mid-south was against michael hayes of the fabulous freebirds michael hayes in an angle, Michael Hayes threw shaving cream into the eyes of the junkyard dog, blinding him. And this angle was very big. It was so big back in 1980, the junkyard dog did not leave his house to sell the angle. He, he didn't leave his house he, to say the angle that he was blind. It also said something that he, he couldn't witness the birth of his daughter Latoya on television. A lot of fans were really concerned about the junkyard dog. They were even sending money to the office of Mid South of getting like many fans were sending maybe money, five, ten dollar bills. I heard they got over like eight thousand dollars for the care of the junkyard dog. But this was a wrestling angle, and back in 1980, they. They, there was no internet and stuff like that, so they th they sh sh knew better. And f the la to end the angle, to blow off the angle at the Superdome in New Orleans, Junkyard Dog Stu Blind had wrestled um, Michael PSAs in a chain match. And mysteriously, Junkyard Dog wins because his height comes back, and this starts off the rise of the Junkyard Dog in the mid south re region. Junkyard Dog was the first major professional African American professional wrestling superstar. He made fifteen thousand dollars a week in Mid South, and he won the Mid Mid South North American Championship several times. He had fused with wrestlers like Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, the the Mass Grappler Len Denton, Ted DiBiase, King Kong Bundy. Butch Reed, Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, Kamala, and so many others. And once in a while, when the junkyard job would 
drop a loser leaves town match in mid south to a heel wrestler. Mysteriously, a wrestler called Stagger Lee, who was, had the exact same shape and size of the junkyard dog, would must pop up, and he sounded like the junkyard dog. And a lot of heel wrestlers knew it was the ju junkyard dog, but I think Bill Watts was playing this up, like. They did in championship wrestling for Florida when J Dusty Rhodes, their biggest heel, f biggest face wrestler, would always drop a lose at least hell match in Florida. He would show up as a midnight rider and as a mass, mass midnight rider. And we all knew Junkyard Dog continued to be a big star for Mid South into 1984 when, the, when Vince McMahon and the WWE called and they took all the top stars of the regional territories because the WWE was growing big and big and big and Junkyard Dog was was taken and he did not even give notice to Mid-South that was leaving and about like he no showed several several like um, cards he was advertised, South shows he was advertised, got the fans mad, got Bill Watts mad but this was around the time Junkyard Dog was 300, he was gaining he was over 300 pounds, eating junk food, and also having a big cocaine addiction. And Junkyard Dog wrestled in the WWF from 1984 through 1988, but he was never more than a mid-card superstar. He feuded with Greg the Hammer of Valentine over the Intercontinental Championship. They had a match at WrestleMania 1, where the Junkyard Dog beat the Hammer by count out. Also, JYD had a few of Terry Funk and Dory Funk Jr. He he also had a few with King Harley Race over the crown of the WWE and a few culminated at WrestleMania 3. And also the biggest win of JYD's WWE career winning the uh, Wrestling Classic pay-per-view tournament 16 wrestlers won it. He won it in 1985 being Macho Man Randy, Randy Savage. That was his biggest win of his WWE career. He sold a lot of merchandise in the WWE. He was the number two seller of merchandise around 1984 to 1988 in the WWE besides Hulk Hogan. But the Junkyard Dog was getting more unreliable and also his work weight. He was sometimes out of it when he was wrestling the heels. A lot of the heels did not want to work with the Junkyard Dog in the WWE because of his... He just got over with his name and charisma. He was not the best of workers. And his work rate even got worse in the WWE. The WWE continued to de-push the Junkyard Dog. By 1988, he was barely on television. He was in small angles and he started no-showing out. No showing house shows and other events and other TV tapings by the after SummerSlam 1988, WWE gave JYD the walking papers. And for the next five years, Junkyard Dog wrestled in the WCW. He would pop in for six months, but he would get fired because he no showed a lot. But the WCW continued to bring in him, bring in him because he had the name value, and they thought. They could that he could beat his demons of like the cocaine and the and the bad work rate and eating too much, but he couldn't lick his wounds. WCW actually pushed Junkyard Dog as the top face, and in the middle of 1990, he had a he had like a WCW World Championship match at the Class of Champions 11 Coastal Crunch against Nature Boy Ric Flair. And there was rumors that Junkyard Dog was going to be WCW World Champion at, at, at that night of the Class of Champions. But it was changed because I heard something Junkyard Dog was, you know, so out of it. And this is when the time WCW and Ric Flair was having major problems. And the match ended with um, Junkyard Dog winning by DQ because Ole Anderson interfered. But this, that match was the worst class of champions to rate. And, and it would have been a disaster if the Junkyard Dog was WCW World Champion because of he was unreliable, out of weight, and out of it. He was, he was into cocaine. And then the other thing of note that Junkyard Dog won during his WCW reign was the WCW World Six-Man Tag Team titles with Tommy Wildfire List and Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express. 
and this was a was a pointless title because they didn't have they didn't have the Fanatic Freebird feud in WCW, and they dropped it to the they dropped it a few months later to the Freebirds. Then Junkyard Dog in and out of WCW into 1993 until WCW said bye bye for good, and he never appe never appeared in WCW or WWE again. The last five years of Junkyard Dog's life was horrible because he was in, still in, addicted to cocaine. And he was overweight. There was rumors he was 400 pounds. And he appeared once in a while on an independent show trying to get back with WCW or WWE, but they wanted no part of him. The, he was just name value at this point, and all the matches he had were garbage matches against like over-the-hill wrestlers as well. He didn't have a steady address. There was rumors that he was basically homeless and the and he was actually working at a security guard at Walmart in Las Vegas, Nevada. In in May of nineteen ninety eight, Junkyard Dog made his last appearance at in a professional wrestling event when at an ECW pay per view. He was on it for being one of the top extreme wrestlers of all time. Junkyard Dog, also known as Sylvester Lever Ritter's life ended in J June 2nd, 1998 in a car accident in North Carolina at the age of 45. He was driving to see his daughter LaToya who was graduating from high school but he missed the graduation ceremony and, and she went out with friends and when it was, he was so disappointed when he was driving back he got into a car accident and passed away at the age of 45. It, was very sad to see the junkyard dog's life end. The junkyard dog was so chariz charismatic. He had he had the he had the charisma. He could have been one of the top professional wrestling stars in the WWE um, if he, he he didn't have his drug habit. If he wasn't addicted to cocaine, cocaine, or if he if he got in shape, he got in shape. Even though his moves. He wasn't a real good wrestler, but he, he could have been like an IC champion type wrestler. He could have been like a Hogan type wrestler if he had his mind to it during the 80s. But I think this just, just like his, with the drugs and the overweight and the unreliability probably doomed the junkyard dog after he le left Mid-South. It was just a sad to see him with all with being a very top star in in mid south he couldn't raise it even high in the WWE he was a big star in WWE but he could have been a bigger star but you know sometimes with fame and drugs would do it to you sad though because junkyard dog was one of my favorite wrestlers and i just hope i just you know hope WWE comes out with a DVD of his career because they now have the mid south library 2004, the Junkyard Dog became a WWE Hall of Fame and blasphemously. That's all I got to say. I'll be back later on with more video blogs. Goodbye, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. See you later.